Hi, and welcome to Crafts by Two. I'm Ken. And I'm Inkscape. What? Okay, Inkscape. Can you take this picture and make a tracing of it for me? Sure. Done. Uh, this doesn't look anything like my drawing. Sorry. So, playing around with Inkscape to make your own coloring book SVGs, have you ever had any of those pictures that just don't work out? That you have holes in the side of your image that you just don't know how to close up? Well, we're going to show you in this video a few quick tips using GIMP. What's GIMP? <laughs> GIMP is an image editing program, another piece of software that's free. We've mentioned it before, but we've never shown it yet. Nope, we haven't, and this will be your chance to learn a little bit about it and add it to one of your tools to make cool SVGs. So just three quick tips that actually can help a lot with some images. Let's go. Here's the original image on the right and the trace I made of it on the left. It looks like it did a pretty good job. Let's start trying to break out the shapes and color it in. Oops, uh, it's not quite what I want. Uh, I can't color in that side over there because it thinks all this is one big shape. If I try to cover in his sash, and it thinks the eye, the background, the sash, this part of his body, thinks it's all one shape, and that just doesn't look that good. So what can you do with a shape like this? You could play around with the actual vector drawing in Inkscape and try to adjust some of the shapes and build new shapes yourself. Sometimes in 301, like we showed you, that works out. But in this case, it's a little more complicated and maybe not worth the time. Is there an easier way? Yep, and we're going to show you in GIMP. Here we are in GIMP. To open a new file, go under File, and Open. Find your image through the dialog, and then click the Open button. When bringing an image into Inkscape to trace, you want to really have a crisp black and white image. This image has a bit of shadow you can see in the background of the image that's actually on the other side of the comic book page that was scanned in. It's also a little gray, it's not quite white and black, and these lines aren't really crisp black. They're kind of a hint of gray in there. So let's clean that up in GIMP. To adjust the contrast, you're going to go to the colors menu and choose brightness contrast. In this dialog, you'll see the brightness and contrast sliders. You can adjust dragging the slider, change the number, or use the up-down arrows. But dragging the slider is the easiest. As long as you have the preview button checked, you'll be able to see your changes as you make them. I'm going to drag the slider a little to the right to increase the contrast. And you can see some of the things disappearing and the lines getting crisper and darker and the background getting more of a pure white. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to click OK to finish the changes. Another benefit of using GIMP is you can use the eraser tool to clean up your image or remove parts that you don't want. Inkscape will do its best to ignore the little dots and specks in your picture, but some of them may be a little too big to ignore. Here I've got a little speck and there's a few kind of dirty lines in the image. I'm going to use the eraser tool to clean that up. The eraser can be found in the toolbox to the left. It's a pink gummy eraser. I click on it to select it. When you've chosen a tool, 
the tool options will show up down below. There's a lot you can change here. All we're really going to focus on right now is the size, to adjust the size of the eraser that we're going to use in our drawing. You can adjust the size by dragging in the box, typing in a new number, or using the up-down arrows. I'm going to adjust this down to about 15. You just want to use an eraser that works for what you're trying to do in the image. Sometimes a big eraser is going to be helpful to clear out large images quickly, or a small fine one so you can get in and adjust some of that detail. Sometimes it can be hard to work at your image at this size. You might want to zoom in, and you can do that on the keyboard using the plus and minus keys to zoom in with the plus and zoom out with the minus. So I'm going to zoom in a little and just clean up a few of the little imperfections in the image. Then there's a few little specks here and there that I'm just going to use the eraser to clear out. And we're good. A shortcut on the keyboard is you can press the 1 key to get back to full size. A few other things I want to do with the eraser. It's not obvious, but there's a black border around this image. Plus there's a few little specks of the drawing that didn't quite scan in well on the edge here. I'm going to just get rid of those. So you can click with the eraser and drag. A shortcut is you can use the shift key to draw straight lines. So you click to start and then if you hold down shift it'll draw a line and when I click again it'll draw that line with whatever tool I had chosen. In this case the eraser. Click once and then hold down shift and then click again and there it went and erased it. On the bottom here, I want to keep some of this detail, so I'm just going to erase again holding down the mouse button. And actually, I want to keep this little bit here that I erased, so you can always undo your work. Go to the Edit menu and choose Undo, and that way it's going to undo what you just did. And GIMP has a little bit of a history, so you can undo a couple of steps, not just the last one you did. So I'm going to finish erasing over here. So there we go, all cleaned up. At the start, when I brought the original image in, you saw how it treated some of the bandana his mask and his chest, all as part of one image. And that's because of these open shapes that you see here. Inkscape doesn't know how to treat these as objects. Most of the time we want to create closed, distinct objects when we're making cuts. These open shapes aren't going to really work well for cuts, and Inkscape doesn't really know how to translate them into images well. That's why some of the shapes it chose really didn't work out for what we wanted. To encourage Inkscape to give us good clean shapes, we're going to use the pencil tool to close off some of these shapes and stay true to the art, but give us some nice closed shapes to work with. For that I'm going to use the pencil tool. Going back to the toolbox, I can click on the pencil to select it. And this 15 is way too big. I'm going to adjust that down to about a 3, because that's going to be pretty similar to the lines you see in the drawing already. So I can come over and just click and draw right on the image. Now that was a little wavy. I'm going to undo that. It doesn't have to be perfect. So this one looks a little jagged, but in Inkscape, it's going to clean that up and give us a bit of a smoother shape. 
Inkscape is going to be forgiving for a lot of those little jaggies, but big waves or curves in your lines, you might want to fix those a little bit better. Remember, you can always zoom in to make it easier to work with your image. One thing you may have noticed is one eye I could color in when I made the SVG from the other image, but this eye I couldn't. If we zoom in real close, you can see that this doesn't quite connect, and Inkscape chose to make this its own shape. So I'm just going to draw in a little bit of a darker, heavier line to encourage Inkscape to make this its own separate piece. I'm just going to fill in some of these other shapes quickly. Trying to stay true to the image. And that shift trick works with the pencil. It works with any tool. So I click once, hold down the shift key, and that brings that line right over. Just going to make this a little heavier, even though what was there before. And this is actually part of the turtle shell. So I'm just going to curve that off a little. And that's a little jaggy, but it should smooth out once we're in Inkscape. So that's why we keep mentioning GIMP in relation to our coloring book SVG. It offers three simple tools that can help improve your images. The contrast, improve the contrast of the image. The eraser, let us clean up little inconsistencies or parts of the image that we didn't want. And the pencil, let us add to the image and close off some of those open shapes, which is going to give us a better cut file, a better SVG. You could do some of these things in Inkscape, but it can be a little more challenging. This is why we wanted to share GIMP with you. It's another free tool that helps you improve your images. Now I'm ready to save this, so I want to come to the file menu, and in GIMP, you don't want to use Save or Save As. That saves it as its own special format called XCF. While Inkscape does recognize XCF files, not a lot of other programs do. So we want to make sure that our images can work in anything because we may not always be using GIMP or Inkscape in the future. If you don't want to keep the original image exactly the way it was, you can always come to the file menu and choose Overwrite. This is going to replace your original image with the changes you made to the current image. If you do want to keep your original image, you'll want to come to the file menu and choose Export As. This will bring up the dialog where you can give it a new name. I'm just putting a 2 in this case. And as long as you have JPEG, PNG, GIF, GIMP will recognize that and save your image in that format. So in this case, I'm going to keep it as a JPG file, a JPEG. So I'm ready. I'm going to click Export. And because this is a JPEG, it brought up this quality dialog. It defaulted to 95, and usually you want to keep a pretty high quality, especially in JPEGs, if you're bringing them into Inkscape to trace. So I'm leaving it at 95 and clicking export. So this saved my work as a new file. So let's open that up in Inkscape and try a trace. Here's the edited image in Inkscape. Let's trace it. Just going to move the image off to the side and bring our trace in. If we zoom in, you'll see it left this a little wavy, but I think that's okay for this drawing. But it did clean up where it looked like things might not be quite as thick, or maybe a little too thick. It gave us a nice cleaner line over here. So now let's break this apart and color it in.
So there you go. That gave us a much cleaner drawing. And you'll notice I was able to color both eyes, the bandana's a separate piece, and not everything's blending together. So while you could do portions of this cleanup that we did with some of the lines and the shapes in Inkscape itself, I'm sure you'll notice comparing this to the 301 that some of the steps were much quicker than messing with the actual lines and nodes themselves in Inkscape. Just being able to quickly bring the pencil and jotting in those extra pieces and then bringing it in to convert, I think you'll see that that was a lot quicker. So in some cases, using GIMP can make things easier. We really wanted to just share with you that there's multiple tools you can use to make great drawings and it's up to you to figure out what works for your images and what you like. So that's our how-to tip for this week. Unfortunately, we've been a little busy getting ready to go on vacation, so the 401 video will be coming out shortly, but not right now. So don't forget, if you like our videos, give them a thumbs up. And we really appreciate you taking the time to comment, give your feedback, and to share our videos. If you like our videos, please subscribe and share them with your friends. Also, don't forget to like our Facebook and visit our webpage at www.craftsby2.com. So until next week, or probably sooner, or maybe not if we're still on vacation, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.